Okay, welcome back into the fully anechoic chamber here for Safe Living Technologies and 9CI. Just about to test the brand new Safe and Sound Pro Millimeter Wave Meter. This is one of our first production meters and so I'm going to be testing uh, along with you in this video from 18 to 40 gigahertz at power densities of 1000 microwatts per square meter. Okay, so you're going to see uh, exactly what I'm seeing in the control room. And here's the meter all set up, ready to go with the uh, semi-omni antenna attached. Let's go. Okay, here we are in the control room. This is a live video feed of the closed circuit camera in the control room. Okay, and this is the live shot of the control interface to the signal generator. So let's go. I'm uh, at 18 gigahertz and from previous calibration run with a calibrated power meter and a calibrated antenna, I know that at 18 gigahertz I need to have a signal generator power of minus 4.1 dBm. Okay, so here it is. I turn on the transmitter and uh, I'm going to uh, look at the average for this test. Now again we're rating this meter from 20 to 40 gigahertz. So right now Looking at average, I'm at uh, 45.6 microwatts per square meter. Let's go to 19 gigs. And we know it needs to be minus 4.2 dBm. Okay, 175 microwatts per square meter average. Okay, now let's go into the operating range of this meter. 20 gigahertz. I'm going to be going down to minus 5.0 dBm. Okay, we're at 400 microwatts per square meter. Now you notice as I go up in frequency, I require less power because the transmitter antenna, the calibrated antenna, has more gain at higher frequencies. So 21 gigahertz. Oh, this is around the same, minus 4.8 dBm. Okay, 444 microwatts per square meter. Twenty two gigahertz minus five point six DBM. Okay, I'm at seven ninety one microwatts per square meter. Twenty three gigahertz minus five point nine DBM one thousand three hundred and forty microwatts per square meter. This is me wiggling my hand in real time, just so you know. Okay, twenty four gigs, same power level. 2200 microwatts per square meter. 25 gigs minus 6.5 dBm. 6 Staying the same. 2200. So even response between 24 and 25 gigs. Let's go to 26 gigahertz. Minus 6.1 dBm. 
3000 microwatts per square meter. 27 gigahertz minus 6.5 dBm. 3,270 microwatts per square meter. 28 gigahertz minus 7.2 dBm. 2200 microwatts per square meter. 29 gigahertz minus 7.5 dBm. 1710 microwatts per square meter. Again we're using the average. This is a CW signal. 30 gigahertz minus 7.4 dBm. 1970 microwatts per square meter. 31 gigahertz minus 8.2 dBm. 1,110 microwatts per square meter. 32 gigahertz. Not 332. There we go, 32 gigahertz. And that will be the same transmitter power to generate our expected field density. And we are down to 791 microwatts per square meter. Again, we're expecting a thousand. 33 gigahertz. Minus 8.8 .8 dBm. 791. I'm just double checking 32 gigahertz again. I had a bit of a brain fart, just wanted to be sure that I that those readings those readings are identical between 30, 32 and 33 gigahertz. So I just wanted to be sure that I wasn't seeing things. Okay, let's go uh, let's go to 40, 34 gigahertz. Minus 8.7. 682. Thirty five gigahertz minus nine point one. Okay. In the perfect world, we're expecting one thousand, but we got one thousand one hundred and ten. Thirty six gigahertz minus nine point zero. Okay. More sensitive here, 1,820 microwatts per square meter. 37 gigahertz. Minus 8.4 dBm is what we need. It's quite sensitive here, 3,480 microwatts per square meter, but you'll see how that plots out when we do our relative uh, frequency response plot. 38 gigahertz. We need minus 9.9 .9 dBm transmitter power. And we are at 1,170 microwatts per square meter. 39 gigahertz. We need a little bit more power. Minus 8.1 dBm. And that remains the same. 1170 microwatts per square meter. And finally, 
our top end of the meter that we're capable of testing here, 40 gigahertz, we need minus 7.9 dBm of transmitter power. And we are at 744 microwatts per square meter. If we had equipment right now that could go above 40 gigahertz, there is very little question in my mind that we would see some, uh, some response uh, probably up past 41 gigahertz on this meter. Okay, and here is the resulting frequency response plot. So uh, the x-axis has frequency, so we're our starting point was 18 gigahertz and we're going in 1 gigahertz increments, 19, all the way to 40 gigahertz. Okay, and the y-axis is our relative response of that ratio. So we are expecting a thousand microwatts per square meter and the blue line represents the decibel variation from what we expected. So the zero dB line is representing a thousand microwatts per square meter and the blue line shows how many dB above or below that. Okay, so we can see that this first line here, this is minus 5, and we got 0, and then up there is plus 5 dB. And so if we look at this curve, we're going from 20 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz, and in this particular case, this test with this antenna and with this meter is showing pretty close to uh, even slightly better than a plus and minus 5 dB response across that entire frequency range. Okay, so you saw the test here uh, in the control room. This is the interface to control the signal generator. Um, this is the, uh, the Mac computer used for uh, graphing the frequency response plot and logging the data. And uh, over my left shoulder there, Behind me is the closed circuit video feed into the chamber. Okay, so you saw me dialing various power levels to the signal generator. Those power levels were determined in a previous calibration run uh, with a calibrated power sensor and a very expensive lab calibrated antenna so that I knew that at each frequency the results in that lab at a one meter test distance was going to be a power density of 1000 microwatts per square meter. Okay, so at each frequency that's the ideal if that meter were uh, completely, completely perfect with a plus and minus zero dB response we would see a thousand microwatts per square meter at, at, uh, at each frequency. But because this is not a super expensive meter that's uh, $20,000 we're seeing some variation. So this first test is extremely encouraging. I'm going to test a bunch of other meters and a bunch of other antennas so that we can arrive at what we think a good uh, uh, frequency response specification is. Uh, we know uh, what frequency range this meter is going to work, but what, what plus and minus frequency, uh, dB frequency response um, going to do some more testing and come up uh, come up with uh, with that value but uh, uh, from what uh, what we're seeing here things are looking very good um, so thanks for watching just wanted you to see the process take care bye bye